Sing it again, Joe. Sing it again. Huh? I need to finish my Okay, we are live this morning. Good morning, everybody. Hmm? Good morning, Mia. How is everybody this morning? It's Friday already, November 10th. We're good. Are you? Chavelle is feeling better. Sophia is uh, getting sick. Huh? Okay, today is the feast of uh, Pope Leo the Great. Yeah, Pope Leo the Great. Okay, so we will uh, we will uh, learn a little bit about Pope Leo the Great a little later. Today, let us tackle the gospel for the day and uh, continue talking about the last things. Okay, so the gospel for today is from Saint Luke, chapter 16, 1 to eight. It's a long gospel, but we will uh, cut it short to be able to comment on uh, the first part of it. So Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship. Because you can no longer be a steward. Okay, so we'll stop there. Prepare an account of your stewardship. This is a um, a um, parable that uh, that shows us what's going to happen in the particular judgment. Okay. We are going to be facing our Lord when we die. In the particular judgment, He's going to ask us, What is this I've heard about you? Of course, our Lord knows everything that's happening to us, right? And if so, if He knows everything that's happening to us, why is He still going to make us render an account? Yeah, Joe? Because we're honest. Because what? To see if we're honest. Yeah, well, it's also because he wants us to be responsible for our own actions. Right? So responsibility is a virtue. It is a virtue that, um, that uh, requires of us to be accountable for everything that we do. That's what responsibility is all about. Okay? That we are accountable for our own actions. You see, God, when God created man, He gave us intellect and will. He gave us the intellect to know what we are doing, to know the difference between good and bad. Okay? So it's knowledge to understand the difference between no, uh, good and bad. And He also gave us a will. A will which is the driving force that directs us to towards doing what we first knew was good. Okay? What our intellect discovered to be true and good, the will is inclined to follow that. So the will is like the engine that drives the rest of us, the rest of our being, to to follow the lead of the intellect, which is to do what is good. Okay? Now, but then the will is free. The will has that important uh, element, that important power, which is freedom. It is free to do the good that the intellect suggests to it or not. Okay? The quality of freedom. And that is what we need to account for. See? How... We have used our freedom while we are here on earth. Have we used our freedom for the purpose for which God gave it to us? Or did we waste it for useless ends, for useless goals that do not lead us to God? So the correct use of freedom is to use that power to do things that would bring us closer to God. To perform actions and behaviors that would lead us closer to God every time. When we use that freedom to disobey God, 
not to do the will of God and to do in, to turn instead to creatures, to turn instead to ourselves, eh? that is where we commit sin. That is when we commit sin. When we abuse that freedom. When we don't use it for doing what is good. That is what leads us to sin. Eh? And depending on the gravity of our sin, it can be small, it can be big. It can be a venial sin or a mortal sin. Eh? Venial sins would be small sins that are readily forgiven. Eh? And we can make up for them easily. Mortal sins are the deadly ones. They're deadly sins. They're the ones that really put a barrier between us and God. They're the kinds of sins that we commit and will separate us completely from God. Eh? And for which we really, really uh, need to make up for and, and atone for and, and uh, go to confession for as soon as possible in order to restore us back to uh, God's good graces. And that is what we, we have confession for. Right? Of course, uh, it's not only the venial sins that we confess uh, in confession, but also, um, I mean, it's not only the mortal sins, but also the venial sins and our imperfections. Okay? So, um, that's what happens when we do not use our freedom correctly and when we turn to ourselves and turn to creatures um, uh, instead of using that freedom for doing the will of God. Okay, so, and if we fall into that grave misfortune of dying, dying at the point of death, and we are not in the state of grace, we are not uh, in, in a state of friendship with God, then when we face God in the particular judgment, and He asks us, render an accounting of what you did in your life. I gave you all of the graces. I gave you all of these talents. I gave you all of these abilities. I gave you all the opportunities in life. What did you do with all of that? What did you do? Did you use all of those things I gave you to straighten up your life? Did you use all of the graces, all of the providential help that I had been giving you all throughout your life, did you use it to do good? Or did you squander all of the good things I gave you and use your freedom irresponsibly to commit sin? What did you do? Folks, it's something we need to ask ourselves every day. What do we do with all of the good things that God gives us every day of our lives. Every day. God is there. God is there and He is looking out for you. He's looking out for you and me all the time. And He wants to help you. He wants to give you all the graces He can give you. An abundance of graces to give you, to help you out. But have you allowed Him? Or... Do you bar him from entering your life because you prefer to um, to tend towards the uh, useless pleasures of the flesh or the useless attachments to creatures? We have to ask ourselves those questions because at the end of our lives, God is going to ask us the question, how did you use your life? What did you do? To everything that I had given to you. And if the answer is positive, where do we go? Heaven. We get the reward of heaven. If the answer is a little less than positive, because there are things that we need to make up for, Purgatory. where do we go? To purgatory. But if the answer is in the negative, if we squandered all of God's goods, if we did not live according to the ways of God and we die in the state of mortal sin, we instantly go to hell. And that's it. That's it. Hell is going to be the eternal 
eternal damnation okay, where our soul will suffer will suffer uh, eternal fire as that's the way that that's the way that uh, God has described it right Jesus has described it that way and and that's also the same thing that Our Lady has shown to uh, many uh, to several uh, visionaries right that hell is going to be eternal fire I guess uh, the the picture and image of fire is is could be the most painful kind of uh, uh, picture that uh, that God can can show us to make us dread it right but the real pain the real pain that we will suffer in hell is is the absence of God the separation from God the the separation from from this 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 perfect goodness that we were meant to have the separation from the perfect love that was supposed to be ours to have that we that we on earth have been trying to have been trying to 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 attain but but of course here on earth we only get a a very very measly and poor a very poor uh, reflection of the kind of perfect love that God wants to give us. Here on earth, all the loves, all the attachments, all the pleasures that we have are a very, very poor comparison. Very poor comparison to the kind of love that God wants to give us eternally in heaven. But many times we are foolish. <laughs> we are foolish. We prefer, we prefer the, the uh, small the insignificant uh, uh, loves, so to speak, or pleasures of this world, the pleasures of our flesh, the pleasures of uh, our attachments. We prefer those things rather than God's infinite, infinite love. And if we make that mistake of preferring earthly love, earthly attachments, earthly pleasures to that of God, well, that is what we will suffer eternally, forever, non-ending, in hell. And all that God will tell us is, well, I was trying to give you all this love. I was trying to give it to you. I was trying to show it to you while you were still alive. But you didn't listen to me. You preferred your own earthly loves. You preferred your own earthly pleasures to my love so well then now you will have to bear the consequence of wanting that of preferring that instead of me since you already prefer that well you will continue to have that in hell forever see so you're going to be completely separated from god Whereas here on earth, we had every opportunity, every chance to still go back to God and to still uh, 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 unite ourselves to God again and again and again and again. But we kept refusing and refusing and refusing and refusing. So, well, we chose. You see, we chose in that sense. We chose our eternal damnation. We chose our own hell. And there is where God who created our freedom to begin with, cannot be the first one to violate the freedom. So, since we freely chose earthly pleasures, other kinds of pleasures, and not that of God's love, then God cannot do anything but, okay, allow us to have it. And He will allow us to have it in hell forever. And that is the most painful kind of punishment that the souls in hell suffer eternally not seeing God eternally being separated from God oh, God bless you folks that's the place we should avoid at all costs and the place to do that the place to avoid it is here on earth the place for us to work towards heaven and avoid hell 
is here on earth. Let us not squander this opportunity. We are all like this steward in the gospel that Jesus tells us today. He squandered his opportunities. God gave him everything, entrusted many things to him, to his care. And he squandered them, thinking that his master was far away and didn't care. And that he had all the freedom to do what he thought he had the freedom to do. Which is to waste all the opportunity in sin. Let us not follow the example of this steward. Let us be good stewards of the graces and the good gifts and the benefits and providence that God exercises and continues to give us every day. Because at the end of our lives, he will ask us to account for all of that. We better have a good answer. Otherwise, we will suffer eternal pain of loss in hell. Okay, that's it for us today. Um, we're off to Mass. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Uh, today we are also commemorating uh, the Veterans Day. It's being observed in uh, many places already. Um, let's remember to pray for our veterans. Okay, so there's a reason why Veterans Day is in November also. Uh, because, you know, we remember them. And uh, especially those who... Uh, gave their lives for our freedoms. Speaking of freedom, right? <laughs> Speaking of freedom. Of course, this is uh, uh, um, a, a different kind of freedom. It's political freedom, but nevertheless, freedom. And uh, we will uh, be eternally grateful to all the veterans who have served in our military. And today and this whole weekend up to Sunday, you know, we can remember them and pray for them especially the veterans in your families. And in my family, yes, we have several veterans, the most illustrious of whom is Grandpa Aaron. So I, I see some relatives on this call. Uh, Leander is there. Uh, Nicolo Marinius is there. A hey, pray for your great-grandfather, Aaron, okay? Uh, so let's, let's pray uh, that uh, we meet all of our grandparents our uh, great-grandparents are veterans in our families and all veterans who served in the war, that they may receive the final reward of freedom in heaven. Okay, folks, have a good weekend. Have a good day today. Have a good weekend ahead of you. Bye. Happy